Client-server architecture is the foundation of modern-day internet and how computers speak to each other. Understanding client-server architecture is essential for any IT role, for a developer, cloud engineer, or an IT support professional. Social networking sites like Facebook, e-commerce sites like Amazon, mobile apps like Instagram, IoT devices like Alexa or Apple Watch all function on the basis of client-server architecture. Client-server architecture consists of two entities, client and server. A client is the one which speaks to the server to receive a service. A server is the entity offering the service, basically a machine which listens for clients to speak to and then speaks back to the client. The word speak here basically means the client sends data to the server to process or request data from the server. And the server then returns some form of data to the client. It could be any service, a web hosting service where you can host your website, a processing service such as making online payments, or a storage service where you can store your documents such as images. So here on my left, I have a client which is sending requests to the server. And it could be a simple request to get some data from the server. The server on the right side returns some type of data to the clients. So when you type say Amazon.com from your browser Google Chrome, Safari or Firefox, your browser is a client and Amazon will be your server. Now Amazon is not the server or a server. It has many servers. But for the sake of simplicity, we will refer Amazon as a single server here. Now your client doesn't necessarily need to know what Amazon server is. It just knows that it's a server it can talk to or send requests to. It will request information to the server and based on the response from the server, it will be able to do other stuff. So when you type Amazon.com in the browser, your browser doesn't even know how to talk to Amazon.com or the server. Behind the scenes, it makes a DNS query to find the IP address of Amazon.com server. You may think of DNS query like a special request that goes to a predetermined set of DNS servers, which basically says, hey, what is the IP address of Amazon.com? The DNS servers returns back the IP address. Think of IP address as a unique identifier of a machine. All computers which are connected to the internet can discover these public IP addresses and send data of packets of information in terms of bytes to these IP addresses. IP addresses can be thought of as a mailbox granted by certain authority. So in case of Amazon.com, Amazon Web Services, the cloud provider, is the entity that has granted IP address to Amazon.com. Now, if you build your own server, let's say in Google Cloud, Google Cloud Provider will be the entity that will grant your server IP address. For example, in Windows Computer, if you open command prompt and type nslookupgoogle.com, it will return the IP address of Google servers. If you run the same nslookup command again, you will get a different IP address because Google has got many servers and whichever server is available, IP address of that server will be returned. If you are in a Mac, you can use the command dig. So now your browser made the DNS query. It now knows the IP address of the server and is now ready to send requests to your servers. It then sends an HTTP request to the server. Now I have covered HTTP in another video, but for now, just think of HTTP a way to send information which a server can understand. So when we say your browser or client send a request to the server, it means that it sends a bytes or characters packed into what we call packets in some special format. This request will also contain IP address of your browser or your machine, also called the source IP address of the request. So when the server gets the request, it knows which IP address it needs to send response to. A server listens for client requests on specific ports. In fact, any machine which has an IP address has got 16,000 ports that programs on the machine can listen to. So as a client, when you're communicating with the server, you need to specify the server port you want to communicate on. You can think of IP address as a mailbox to an apartment complex and think of ports as the actual apartment number. Typically in a client server model, client usually knows the port they need to use depending on the protocol they are trying to speak to the server. For example, if a client is going to speak to a server using HTTP protocol, it will always going to use port 80. For HTTPS, it is port 8443. Check out my video on network protocols to understand further. And if you have found this video informative, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing.